Hey everybody, I'm Scott Weichel. You're listening to My Kind of Country. Man, it's a great night when I get to talk about Lefty Frizzell and his music. And it's even better when I get to talk about it with this gentleman who is my special guest. We've got the Lefty Fest coming up on Saturday, March the 28th at the Ernest Tubb, Texas Troubadour Theater in Nashville. And i got the man himself that's putting it all on here with me tonight to tell us all about it. It's always a pleasure to welcome my very dear friend David Frizzell to My Kind of Country. David, how are you tonight, my friend? Good to be with you, pal, on my kind of country. I like that sound, my kind of country. That's right. <laughs> that's a great title, buddy. I'd have to write you a song about that. Hey, you that's do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so everybody doing good. The family doing good out there. Mine is here. And uh, we're really looking forward to doing this lefty because I always enjoy doing a, a, a lefty show because I get to do lefty songs. There's not better songs in the world than that. Well, you're right about so, that. So I get a chance to jump up there and do, if you got the money, I got the time. Mom, if you get mom and dad walk, oh my goodness. So it'll be fun. And we got a, a bunch of guests coming in. So we'll have, uh, we'll have a, a lot of action with that kind of thing. And we got one of the best bands that I've put together that I can recall. These guys are all in crazy. You got a banjo even coming in. But I ain't got a banjo coming. I thought we just might just as well fill Fill, fill everything up. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah, we did a, I had a friend of mine come over to my studio not too long, well, I guess a few years back. And they, there was a banjo, and three mandolins, and a stand-up bass. And we did three lefty songs uh, with, those, with that right there. We did Always Late, like really up-tempo, you know, and that, and that banjo was just a flying. So we're going to do that, that particular one on the show with the banjo coming in. Oh, that's so great. it'd be a little, a little bit different. I always late than you've probably heard before. Oh, that's, that'd be great. Um, yeah, so that. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, Ronnie Reno, you recorded that with Ronnie Reno, right? Ronnie Reno. Love Ronnie Reno. And, uh, yeah, we did. He, he played, uh, actually, I, I sang the song. He played uh, mandolin on it with two other guys. And then he came in and did some harmony with me on the song. Yeah. So they're just, just so much fun. You know what? I, I've been a, a, I, I, I've always said that if you get a great song, I mean, I mean, a literally a great song, it can be done by anybody any way they want to. A great song is a great song no matter how you do it. And it just proved it outright to be true then when we did this. Uh, we did three songs of his bluegrass style. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, knocked out. Now, in fact, if you hadn't got them, I'll send them to you. I've I've got the one. I've I got the uh, Always Late. I've got that one. I don't think I have the other ones, though, so let's send those yeah, up to me. Uh, uh, did they just pass my way again? I think it was one. And the other one was I Love You a Thousand Ways. Oh, man, yeah. i got to hear those. Oh, with yeah. mandolin and banjos. Oh, my gosh. You know, but I think any lefty only wrote the great song. Yeah, all the great songs. And I enjoy doing them so much that I'm, I'm really glad to host this, uh, the Midnight Jamboree, and do a tribute to Big Brother Lefty. Well, That's you, on his birthday coming up, you know. Yeah, 92nd birthday, right? Yeah, I think it'd oh, be, man. yeah, what is it, 91 or 2? I think I, 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 believe it's a, I think it's his 92nd, he was, he was born he, in 28. He was born, so I think 19, he, but not, he was born in 1928. Yep. And, um, you know, he left us in 1975. He had another place to go, and so he went and, and left me here by myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, left me. I got my brother Alan with me, so, and so I guess we're all right. Well, you're always carrying on the music. You know, Lefty had a, uh, a really big distinction. You know, he a lot of artists really struggle to find that that right song, and and he had it right out of the gate. Um, he had, you know, a number one, his very first recording, and that's that's yep. pretty amazing. You know, if you got the money, I got the time. That was right out of the gate. Yeah, number one right off. The next song was on the B side. In those days, they were 78s. Yeah. And the one side was, uh, if you got the money, the other side, the B side of that was I Love You a Thousand Ways. And uh, and it went number one. Yeah. So uh, I think it was something similar to, um, if you got the money, it was about in September or something like that of 1951. No, 1950. And, uh, and then November of 1950, I love you. I love you a thousand ways. So he had two number ones straight in a row. And then he didn't stop there. He won it on in 1951 and had four songs in the top ten at the same time. Man, I don't. And he was right there with Hank Williams 
who had three in the in the same top ten. Lefty and Hank Williams had Lefty had number one, number two, number four, number six, and then uh, Hank Williams had three of the rest of them. <laughs> Man, that hasn't been done <laughs> before the, or at, since. <laughs> at the same time, at the same time, that's All amazing. In the same week. That's like that Merle song. It says, "Lefty Hank and Lefty crowded every jukebox." Man, they sure did, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> they? They crowd. They took it over. Is what they did. Oh man! And that was 1951. God. Man, I was just a young man, and, and I was trying to sing "I Love You a Thousand Ways," and I did so on a on a radio station out of Kirby, Texas. And I was on there every Sunday, man. I was singing "Oh, I Love You a Thousand Ways." <laughs> Nine years old. That's like your, a little girl. <laughs> you, uh, I, you played that uh, the, the last time that we were there with Freddie Hart uh, at the Midnight Jamboree. Uh, they played, they played that during your show. Oh, they played me singing. Yeah, I love, I love you thousand ways when I was nine years old. Yeah, I sounded like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> I've always loved, I'll always love, always loved that song. That was my for the, for as long as I can remember. From the time it was written to the time it came out, all those years, up until uh, That's the Way Love Goes and uh, I Never Go Around Mirrors came out. Yeah. And then when they when they wrote him, a Whitey Shaper wrote those. And then they became, so the, I Love You Thousand Way was my number one up till then. And now it's number two, three. <laughs> 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 I love that song. Oh, me too. Any of those lefty songs, though, I'm a huge fan. But you know, I was, I was uh, in my in my time coming up. I was uh, I had a lot of I loved a lot of people. I love all music basically. I love I love all music, and I was really inspired by Marty Robbins, you know. And and then Merle Haggard came along, and man, good grief, there was a you know tremendously involved with Merle Haggard. But I was also into into uh, Buddy Holly. And of course, everybody was in Elvis Presley, right? Mm -hmm. but Buddy Holly knocked me out. I loved Buddy Holly, and then Ray Charles with the blues, real deep blues. I love deep blues. I still do today. And so I was influenced by a lot of different people. But I think Johnny Cash was a, one of my absolute heroes. Oh yeah. And I got a chance to meet him when I was 16 years old, and then work with him and do all kinds of years, you know. So I've had a blessed life, my friend. Well, you sure have. Still living it. I ain't giving it up. Well, that's great. And, of course, you've got the uh, Frizzell and Friends, the wonderful tribute to Buddy Holly that's available on davidfrizzell.com. Got to have that. We've done a feature on that. And uh, so much great music there. you got to check it out, folks. And, uh, of course, the Ernest Tubb Midnight Jamboree will be on uh, Saturday, March the 28th. And that's at yeah. the Texas Troubadour Theater right there on Music Valley Drive. And free show. So you got to get there early, though, because the seats will fill up. And the taping, I believe, is at... Uh, <laughs> Uh, 10 o'clock, is that right, David? Right, we'll be there getting ready and everything there a little earlier than that. But 10 o'clock, we start playing those lefty songs. I always got to play a couple of David things, you know. But uh, but we got a band there just going to knock everybody out. And uh, But we're going to we're gonna be playing a lot of lefties, talking about him some and, and let people know who he was. If you don't know him, you'll know him when you leave my place. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all about him, and it won't take me long because I know him really well. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's going to be a great show. Uh, you'll be able to stream the uh, video online at uh, Ernest Tubb Record Store on Facebook. And, of course, yeah. the uh, at midnight, the uh, WSM radio will uh, broadcast the uh, the show in its entirety as well. So you got several ways to uh, tune into that, folks, and get there if you can. Because, man, it'll be a great show. David, uh, who's uh, who have you got coming on the show with you? Do you know? Yep. Well, I think there's, there's several people coming up. Uh, one is uh, uh, is uh, Cagney for sale. Oh, great. My brother Alan's son. He was really making a big dent in this country music business himself right now. So I'm really hoping he'll come out and maybe sing a duet with me or something. We'll sing a lefty song of some kind. and and we're really thinking about California Blues. It's an old Jimmy Rogers song. Yeah. And we're really thinking about that. But it could be anything because this Cagney, he is really, really something. And uh, people could get a chance to meet him and or tune in and hear him sing because he's just great. He's just a young kid, young guy. Reminds me of myself when I was his age. <laughs> running around with, when I was running around with Brother Lefty. 1959, I was running around with Brother Lefty. First time I came to Nashville, I think, was about 59. And uh, the first time I went to the Grand Ole Opry, my brother Lefty took me to the Grand Ole Opry, 1959, February 1959. And uh, 
we went there, and Mar and uh, uh, Marty Robbins was on. Oh uh -huh. man, I got a chance to meet Marty Robbins, and what a time that was! He's a you know yeah, a great Marty Robbins is. I'm saying. Oh yeah. And then and then uh, uh, Tex Ritter was not Tex Ritter. Ernest Tubb was there, and I got a chance to meet Ernest Tubb. And then we went from the Grand Ole Opry, to the, you know, the Grand Ole Opry thing. We went over to Ernest Tubb's Midnight Jamboree he had that night. So he's had this Midnight Jamboree, the show going for all these years. I think it's like 50 or 60 some years that thing's been going every week. And I've hosted it a lot oh, through the years, and I'm hosting it again on the 28th for my brother's birthday party. So what a deal. Oh, absolutely. And i got to thank David McCormick for keeping it going for all these years. And what a wonderful place. And, and it's a free show. I mean, you just can't beat that. You know, there's been some awesome entertainment come through those doors. You know, I don't know how David's done it all these years, but bless him for doing it. Absolutely. Because, uh, you know, he's one of the great, great peoples that I know in country music. And he keeps that show going every week. And uh, I remember one time he said, David, I don't know why you don't do this every week. <laughs> he said, <laughs> you just come on over every week if you'd like to. I said, well, man, I thank you for the invite. But I do have to go out and sing to some other people. If you <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows you packed the house. I'll tell you what, that was standing room only last time I was there with you. <laughs> uh, you know what? It is that way. It seems like, I don't know if it's that way for everybody. I hope it is. But it's always been that way for me. Uh, Wood and God bless it, you know. Amen. Well, you got the good songs too, and uh, man, I tell you, the uh, the Lefty Bear Bear Family box set—that's incredible. And I know your uh, audio book is included in that too, right? It is in there, you know. And when I got that, uh, when I got his book, when I wrote Lefty's my memoirs of Lefty, and it's kind of like a biography of Lefty, and I put it out some years ago, and it was a CMA Book of the Year. And it just was it just made me feel so good that other people liked it. And if you read that book, you can learn almost everything you ever wanted to know about Lefty. And uh, I like the book because it tells you everything. But I also did an audio book. And it's the same book. Only thing is is that you get to hear Lefty sing in it. It's a little different because you get to hear Lefty sing. And it's a story about a music man, and you aren't be able to hear him sing. So I like the audio book, but the main thing, I guess, is is the is the main I love you a thousand ways story of Lefty Frizzell, and uh, but it was the book of the year, so I I enjoyed that. I'm still enjoying the thought of that. People just want to know a lot about the guy who got it. A lot of it started, you know. He was one that didn't, that came up with the honky tonk the honky tonk music, with that honky tonk piano, like Pig Robin plays. Boy, Pig Robins can play. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man. I I've invited him to come out to the show. So I hope he comes out and plays piano for me that oh, night. Oh, God, that'd be but great. We'll see. Yeah, that would be great. You know, uh, uh, Jeannie C. Riley and I have gotten to be really good friends, and I don't know if you realize how big of a fan she is of, of you and Lefty. And, uh, and she is, isn't she something? Oh, man. And she she just, is absolutely something, isn't she? She absolutely loves you guys. Well, I, I sent her a copy of the audio book, and I'll tell you, she called me and she was about crying. She was just absolutely loved, oh. loved, loved that book. And, you know, uh, I was out. In, I was out in Texas, real close to where she's from, and I missed her when I was out there. But uh, I've always wanted to get with her to say hi to and just hug her neck. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's an incredible lady, and I met her a bunch of years ago and stuff. But the fact that that uh, she likes me and brother Lefty, I, I just it makes me want to just hug her up. You know what I mean? <laughs> you betcha. Well, you uh, you were telling me you're working on a, a screenplay too for a Lefty movie. Well, you know what? Since I wrote the book, I started writing. I thought after I wrote Lefty's, Lefty's Life, and then I got through with it, I kind of stepped back a little bit and said, well, what else can I do? <laughs> i got to do something else with this, you know. So I started writing a screenplay. So I, I wrote four screenplays, actually. And I wrote them. You could, it's the same story, but just a different way of putting the scenes in there, different way of telling it, you know. Each one was a different way of of getting uh, through the lefty's story. But now I've got some people really interested in it, and uh, there's a big meeting coming off here not too long ago, uh, not too long from now in Nashville here, which uh, it would be one of the reasons for the meeting is the lefty movie. And uh, so I want to have one screenplay. What I'm doing is I'm sitting down here actually doing that now, actually, and, uh, and have been doing it here for a while. We've got a little, I'm about halfway through it now. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the best scenes out of all four 
screenplays that I've written and putting them all into one. And, uh, and and Joe's helping me with it. Bless her heart. She's she's got an app of some kind. I can't remember. The, oh, thank you. I can't remember the name of it. But a special app written for screenplays. Wow. And she's doing all the other stuff. Like what I like about it is I write the screenplay, and then I might in the, maybe one of the scenes I might I might shorten the scene a little bit. Uh, maybe just have them say a few little things and maybe go to another scene. But what I actually do then is write what. Ex- like when Lefty got in a fight one time, uh, I, when I, I put it in the in the screenplay, but I put it in where where Lefty and this guy had an altercation, just so they they didn't agree on something. So then I went on, but in the but in a note I put for the director, I wrote the whole fight scene. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote the whole thing. Lefty threw hit that. Hit him with a left hook, died, dang, down he went. <laughs> I, put, I mean, I wrote the whole thing, so for a director, I put it there for a director's note. If the director wants to make that scene into something bigger, then here it is. So this is actually what actually happened. And uh, and I tell you what, I, I was out there a lot with Lefty. I don't know. I was out there a lot with Lefty uh, back, in, back in the day, and I was with him, you know, I was with him for four years straight, never left the side. Anyway, uh, I've seen him in a lot of different little fisticuffs, and and I, I tell you what, uh, really one of the things I remember the most is I remember him swinging once, and that was the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see any. I said, well, what what else is going on here? <laughs> he hit him one time, bam, that was it. He had such a he had such a temper on him, when, but what was great was when he wasn't upset or mad. I think he was the greatest guy in the world to be around. He. It was more fun. He had, he, he could, he, he could have, he could have, he'd make something fun out of anything. You know, it's just anything come up, anything happen, and he'd make something where you could laugh about it. He was an amazing man. Even to playing golf with him was an absolute occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, you should have been there. You would have loved to see that. Well, I'll tell I'd you. To, I'll have to imitate him one time when I'm really sure what he did. When he was playing golf. Oh, my God. It's still funny to me. But uh, just being around him and, uh, and especially anything really serious come out. I was with him in 1959 when Buddy Holly and the big Bob from Richard Valens got, got in that airplane and didn't make it out. And uh, he knew what a big, big absolute fan I was of Buddy Holly. And he got me in that. So even a, even a really tough time like that, it, it was great to have to be with him because he made it easier for me, you know. And uh, all the years I was with him, Scott, he never told me one time that I couldn't do something. He never said, David, you can't do that. Never. Everything he ever said to me was, yeah, boy, you too. Well, that's great. Go do some more, you know. That's the way he was with me. And wow. uh, I couldn't have, I, I really don't think I could have done everything that I did without knowing that he knew I could do it. Wow, that's wonderful. I wish I would have got to. I, always work, well, he always worked with me. I wish oh, I would have got to know him because yeah. if he's anything like you, I would have loved him. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> but I appreciate that, Scott. And, uh, yeah, I actually feel sorry for him if I didn't meet him. I'm absolutely – and Merle Haggard, you know, how close we were. Uh, if there was a, I don't think there could be a bigger fan than I am. If there is any, it had to be Merle. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. I oh, believe that. Oh, man, was that something. I can get with him. I could get with Merle and hadn't seen him in a year, maybe. Hadn't, hadn't been with him. But I get with him in three minutes. What was that? But after three minutes, we're talking about Lefty. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a minute and a half. You know what I mean? Everything everything to me and him was about Lefty. What did he, how did he do that? Or why did he, you know, just amazing, man. It was great to be with Merle anytime, every time. Oh, yeah. I agree and, with and that. He, and he became a big, a big help to me, as you know. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, folks, you can go to davidfrizzell.com, check out all the tour dates coming up, including July 15th at the uh, Midwest Country uh, Theater there in Sandstone, Minnesota. Our friend Lois Jean's going to be there to see you for that one, David. <laughs> uh, I hope so. I, hope, I know so. <laughs> you know so. And then, uh, gosh, uh, July 17th, you're going to be in Hampton, Iowa. That's with the uh, the Country Gold Tour, right, with Leroy Van Dyke. That's right. It'd be great to see him. You know, he's the there again, another amazing person in this country music business. Absolutely. He's an amazing guy. Absolutely. It's going to be fun. And he's got, you know what, he always has 
one of the greatest bands you'll ever have a chance to work with. Yeah. One of these days, you come out with me because you know you're starting to sing with me when I go out there now. I know. You make me nervous, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get up there and we sing that song, Lefty Merle and Me. Oh, Boy, man. You're, you're so good at that. I may not even sing that again until like. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's all it's all you and the band. If I, if you don't have that band, it, it makes me sound terrible. So. <laughs> uh, well, band's good, but Leroy's always had the best band you'll ever have a chance to work with. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's one of the reasons that they ever call me. Take that, take it, let's go. Yeah, absolutely. He's the best. He's the, got the best band in the world, and of course you love him, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. You're July 26th. You're going to be in Canada at the uh, um, Palmer Rapids Twin Music Festival. So our Canadian listeners, you want to check that out. And then uh, September 19th at the uh, North Country Music Festival there in Anderson, California. It's up by our buddy yeah. Brad, Brad Peterson. So I know he'll be there. And, oh, God, that's right. Yeah. That's not very far from Sacramento, is it? Uh, you know, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's up in that area. It's up in that. Yeah, I know it's up in the northern part there. So, and then hopefully some Michigan days. We got to get you up here when the snow gets out of here. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, let me yeah let me know when that all leaves and I'll show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are uh, we're going to play some of Lefty's great songs, and David, I'm going to pull out some interesting songs from you today. I'm going to kind of surprise you and our in our audience. I've got a song here from 1973 that you did on Capitol Records. It's called Jesus and Joe. Do you remember that one? Oh, I wrote that. I know you did. <laughs> God, I don't remember anything about it, though, but I remember writing it. <laughs> Jesus and Joe. Man, how I, I, I come I don't have that? <laughs> Well, I'll have to get it. I'll have to get you one. By gosh, I I got it right here. We're gonna play it tonight. And you also, you, you also did a, a stellar version of uh, Murder on Music Row. Oh, that's right. You know what? We had a great, great version of that song, and uh, and I like that kind of song anyway. Yeah, absolutely. It, it really, we had a great band. Oh my God, we had Reggie Mack come in. We had some of the great, great people on that song. And I thought it was, they promised me they was going to put it out as a single when I, if I would do it. And so uh, so I did. And so I came in and did it. And, man, it turned out. And they did put it out real quick. But I think it was jerked off there because, because of uh, a couple other guys did it. Yeah, Alan Jackson, George Strait <laughs> did it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mine kind of took the back seat after. And, they, and I, nobody even knew they were going to do it. If we'd have known it, we wouldn't have even done it. You know? <laughs> But, uh, but I'm glad I had a chance to sing it because it's a great song. Well, we're going to play that tonight, and that's on a great collection. Uh, it's on Gusto Records. You can pick that up, folks. Um, oh, wow. Uh, fantastic music on there, and uh, we'll play Lefty Merle Me. We've got, I got a live recording of you and I doing that song in Muskegon, Michigan, so we'll play that for the oh, folks tonight, too. Play that thing and take an encore. Take an encore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till we do it again, man. It'll be a blast. Oh. Looking forward to seeing you, as oh, always. Buddy. You know, I like the song anyway. But it makes it, it has a lot more fun than what I'm and you're doing it together. Well, I appreciate it so much. And, uh, folks, again, please uh, make plans uh, for the Lefty Fest at uh, the Ernest Tubb Texas Troubadour Theater. That's in Nashville. It's going to be on Saturday, March the 28th, 10 o'clock Central Time. And uh, make sure you get there early and get a seat and clap loud because you'll be able to hear yourself on the radio that way, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get, a, I get a chance to go in and host the show. And then usually I, we go and maybe have a little bite to eat someplace. But on the way home, driving home, I listen to the show. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's the so, way to do it. That's the way to do it. It great. It works great. I'm not used to hearing, hearing myself that much. So, uh, so once in a while I get a chance to do it, and I thought, oh, did I hit a bad note there? <laughs> <laughs> I better work on that area right there. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, you know, a great life in country music, man. That's my life, because it's been absolutely unbelievable. Ran into some of the greatest people absolutely in the world, and you are definitely one of those. And uh, and then to be married my, to my wife, Joanne, she is the one that makes keeps me going well, in every is, sense of the word. She is wonderful. And I'll tell you what, she, she is such a yeah. master of taking care of everybody, and you don't even realize she's doing it, you know? <laughs> I, know I don't know how she's put up with me all these years, but she takes care of me. And, and and everything, everything we do, she takes care of it. I don't know she does. And I didn't know she knew that much about everything <laughs> until she came out here and, and got involved with me. And and uh, now she she does she some does some of the booking. She does 
all the paperwork because I can't do any paperwork. Uh, and sometimes she'll let me know where we're going, what we're doing. But most of the time it's when we're getting ready to go. I, I, I'm on like, <laughs> no basis, you know. <laughs> but she's the best, and uh, and uh, I don't tell her that often enough, so. So I'm telling you now. Absolutely. Well, I echo that, and I know that uh, Sarah and Merritt will say the same thing, and they say to tell you hi, and they love you too. By gosh, oh, they're, hey, they're incredible. My goodness gracious, you're one of those lucky people too. Oh man, and you know, you. It, you, you know it. Though I know it. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But well, thanks for having me on, pal. Oh, always, buddy. Thank you so much for taking the time, and I'm looking forward to uh, uh, seeing the show and. Uh, Folks, please check it out. And, David, stay in touch with me. And anything uh, you got going on, let me know because you know I'm here to help you get it out there. You're the best, buddy, and I'll talk to you soon. And thanks for everything you do for us. All right. Here is some great music from David Frizzell and Lefty Frizzell. And, by gosh, we're going to play some Jimmy Clay Frizzell and some Alan Frizzell in there. We're going to play all sorts of great Frizzell music for you as we continue with My Cat of Country. David, thanks again. Thank you, buddy. See you soon, Scott. Nobody saw him running from 16th Avenue. They never found the fingerprints or the weapon that was used. But someone killed country music, cut out its heart and soul. They got away with murder down on Music Road. The almighty dollar and the lust for worldwide fame slowly killed tradition, and for that, someone should hang. They all say not guilty But the evidence will show That murder was committed Down on Music Road For the steel guitars No longer cry And fiddles barely play the drums and rock and roll guitars are mixed up in your face. Well, old Hank, you wouldn't even have a chance on today's radio since they committed murder down on Music Road. Thought no one would miss it Once it was dead and gone They said no one would buy the more Drinking and cheating songs Well, there was no justice in And the hard facts are cold Murder's been committed down on Music Road. For the steel guitars no longer cry, and you can't hear fiddles play. With drums and rock and roll guitars mixed right up in your face. Even Brother Left wouldn't have a chance On today's radio Since they committed murder Down on Music Road 
Why they even told the possum To pack up and go back home There's been an awful murder Down on Music Road Hello, friend Hey, it's good to see you You look like someone that I should know Sorry I Didn't hear you come in What was your name, my friend? Okay, I'll call you Jesus And you can call me Joe Yes, I know, friend That I am dying But the sad part is dying long For no man that's really lived Truly wants to die And I hate for a stranger to see me cry So do I know you, Jesus? And do you know You tell me that you won't be surprised if I don't know you And you say that some folks never will Well friend I hope those other folks are smarter than I And don't wait until they die To find out you are real friend for being here with me as my life before my eyes unfolds if I had the chance to live my life again you know I would live it with you my friend yes I know you Jesus and I hope you know old Joe Yes, I love you, Jesus, and I hope you love old Joe. 